Top of the morning to you this morning. Welcome once again to another live broadcast of the Potter's Gate community. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. We want to thank God for another day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed, we must rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, we want to thank you this morning for granting us another beautiful day like this, another time to spend in your presence, to hear your word and to be part of your speakings in the earth. We glorify you because we believe this morning, once again, you're going to take us even further into that which you're unpacking and revealing to us as we advance into the reality of your counsel for this new day. Lord, as your spirit continue to speak and guide us and teach us and instruct us, Father, we ask you this morning that you will bring us into special understanding of your mind of your will of your counsel and of your purpose we pray this morning oh father that as you begin to take us even deeper into that which your spirit is saying for this new day father that there will be clearer insight there will be clearer understanding there will be clearer vision of your mind and of, of your purpose so we thank you lord this morning lord that as i engage oh god with with your with, with your people as i engage with listener out there lord that i'll be able to communicate in such a way that they will understand that which your spirit yes is emphasizing and declaring for this new day i thank you lord because i believe it's not by might it's not by power but by my spirit you let your spirit perfect that which oh god you have desired and ordained for every listener out there lord lord that the word that will flow in out of me will be relevant word will be words of life will be words of truth will be words that will bring them oh god even into a clearer insight a clearer uh, understanding of that divine authority that you have given unto them even as we begin to look into the whole counsel of undressing and redressing i believe oh god that you have a plan for every one of us and as we begin to follow what your spirit is saying and emphasizing for this new day father that lord indeed our life will become even more relevant we'll continue to advance in the light of truth we will see your kingdom manifest in our day and in our time we bless you father we honor your holy name our desire is to be used of you our desire is to be that vessel to be that instrument that you have desired and ordained for this brand new day thank you lord as as your kingdom begins to come lord that we will indeed be be, be, be vessels oh god that will be used and that will become indeed a worthy instrument to bring forth your counsel in jesus name amen i want to welcome you this morning to another session to another live broadcast of uh, god's mind of god's voice of god's desire and of god's counsel for this new day this is the day of the lord this is the day of the un of the unfolding of the counsel of god for your life and for my life for the church and for the nations and i'm so excited knowing that heaven is speaking to us and is giving us a matching order what a day to be alive i want to quickly continue this morning from where we stopped yesterday yesterday we we began to look into something very crucial and important in terms of how we need to make that shift of thoughts in, in, in line with that which God is showing or revealing to us so that we can become relevant in that which is been excuse me in that which has been designed and ordained for us to carry out all right for every purpose for every vision for every assignment that has been given to us we need to come to a position where all right we wear the right mentality we have the right spiritual gear okay to be able to fulfill or that which has been committed into our hands and therefore we're looking into this concept of undressing all right there's no doubt that you are now okay a product of an of an environment that have shaped us to such a degree that uh, uh, we, we we have come to see life we've come to view life we've come to see ourselves our environment even that to which amen the father is doing the church the kingdom from a from you know from a, a perspective from a narrow perspective that may not necessarily represent or right, the intentions of god for us so one of the things the lord is, is sharing and saying to us that in this new day as we advance as we want to go forward to you know to meet with the lord and come into the confluence of his uh, of his plan and purpose we have to undress ourselves there has to be that point where we locate uh, amen, the wrong garments, we locate the wrong influence, we locate the wrong mindset, the, the wrong paradigms all right, that we have imbibed. We have to undress them. We have to remove those things for us to be able to come into all right, the reality of that which all right, it's ordained for us. The Bible says there was a, 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 a banquet, and a guy was found within, amen, within the banquet with with the wrong dressing, with the wrong clothing, and he was bundled out. The Bible says they, they cast him out. The king said, "Take him out, you know, you know, remove him from, you know, from from, you know, from." 
from the community of the uh, you know of, of those celebrating so we want to be able to have the right gear the right clothing the right apparel we want to we want to have the right mindset you see when we talk about undressing we're talking about the state of mind we're talking about a quality amen of our spiritual state we're talking about you know a dimension of existence in god amen that is in sync that is al- that is in alignment amen with god's desired and god's you know counsel for our life and therefore we will continue this morning as i go back to the scripture that we closed with uh, uh yesterday and that is in first uh, excuse me john chapter 5 and we're looking at this uh, uh, concept of this man that you know jesus found at at the pool bible says he was sitting at at the ship at the ship gate you know a uh, uh, ship gate by the pool amen in, in, in you know at the temple the scripture said that uh, uh, jesus discerned that this guy had been there for you know for, for for you know for a long period so he asked him a question i don't want to go through the whole story again because there are a couple of scripture we're going to be reading this morning uh, pardon me if i'm if i'm sounding a bit too fast i just would like to conclude this morning and finish all that we need to you know to to finish in terms of the necessary emphasis that we need to emphasize so that amen, we can really develop that spiritual energy and capacity and, 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 and motivation. In fact, that is the whole essence of this teaching. I want you to be motivated that as we as we press on in, G, in this January in, in, in 2019, that we have the right spiritual hardware, we have the right spiritual software, that we have the right spiritual template, that our life, amen, is in sync, is an alignment with that which amen, heaven requires, that we we don't have a, a wrong you know uh, uh, view and perceptions and and mindset okay hindering us or holding us back from advancing remember we dealt with the issues of memory all right that which amen keeps us bound amen it's not more of that which we see on the outside is that is that which actually you know uh, uh, sticks to our our mindset our thought pattern all right the bible says for as a man will think in his heart so he is so the the, the concept of how we view how we think how we see things all right that is where we we are either d- deliver or found to be in bondage. So the Bible says regarding this man, and you find that that uh, what was actually a, a hindrance to this man was not more of his physical state, but of his mental state. And that is the emphasis. That is the punchline here. That the emphasis here is not more of yes, he was lame, amen, but of 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 the kind of. Uh, 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 development that has taken place in his mindset in terms of negativity such that he could no longer see or uh, breakthrough or victory amen when it appeared let's let, let, let maybe maybe i should just read that scripture again this john chapter 5 i read from verse 1 the bible says sometimes later jesus went to up, went up to jerusalem for one of the jewish festival now there was in jerusalem near the ship gate and i explained yesterday ship gate is a place where you're supposed to be having nourishment you're supposed to be having clarity vision understanding creativity i mean the ship gate is the place where you are supposed to be able to hear the voice of god know the will of god all right that, th- those are symbolic of this position as a ship gate is a place where the ship comes in and go out where they find pasture they find life they find hope but unfortunately because this ship gate is a religious state remember this is a temple where all kinds of spiritual activity religious activity is happening but is actually not empowering the people because at this ship gate you find the bible says the lame you find the blind and you find or at the you know the, the, the paralyzed so you when you find you know yesterday i was looking at this concept after you know uh, uh, the, the broadcast i was looking at you know this category this three category of people found at this temple ship gate and then you begin to you know it is interesting as as um, i mean as as one interpret that spiritually and begins to see what god is saying with regards to the state of the church it says that you find the blind there in verse three in verse three of that scripture says here a great number of disabled people I mean, how do you find disabled people in a place where or uh, it's supposed to be giving you ability for enablement, ability for mobility, capacity for advancement? All right. So something basically is wrong with this concept of 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 the house of God, if you will, concept of a church or temple, if you will, <laughs> because the Bible says this is this is a temple. This is this is where people go to worship. But what was positioned at the ship gate, Amen, is this disability. The Bible says all kinds of people there you find who are disabled able all right people and they were lying there because they were blind that's the first category of people that i saw there they were blind they were lame all right and they were paralyzed 
all these people reflect a dimension of spiritual deformity. All right, the blind means they cannot see the things of God. They cannot they cannot press into all right the prophetic counsel of God. Amen. They are lame means they, even if they have sight, they cannot step into lame and, par- and, and, and paralysis are almost the same. All right, you 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 you, you may you may say, well, I, I'm not blind. I, I've got prophetic sight. I can see certain things. But guess what? You have no mobility. You have no capacity. There is no strength. All right, that that you know that that that. that that, that's the that's the underlying issue here. There is no strength to get up, to advance, to come into that to which a man God has desired you to come into. In other words, even if you have an idea of what God wants you to do, if you are in this kind of a house, you cannot get up, you cannot arise, you cannot move into all right, God's purpose for your life. My good God, what a reflection of many churches that we are seeing out there. What a reflection of many communities that we are seeing out there today. That yes, people are there, people go to church, but they are paralyzed. They are disabled people, and, and you know that when you when you are in a state of disability, come on, you become what you 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 become dependable, or right? you you become one who who depends on others and that and that's the mindset here all right you depend on others to help you to carry you okay uh, uh, you know to to you know to you know move you around because if you're blind you need somebody to you know to 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 carry around and god help you if you have the wrong people leading you the bible says how can the blind lead the blind <laughs> but to fall into the ditch okay if you have people all right th- if you have people that are paralyzed how do you come into the reality of god's counsel and i mean this thing we're talking about here is very very important i mean after yes Yesterday's uh, broadcast, the Lord just you know highlighted this point in my in my spirit. Said, "Do you look at the the the, the caliber, the, the the quality of people at this ship gate? I mean, the Bible says they are disabled people. They lie there. They are blind. They are lame, and they are paralyzed. And this man, the Bible says in verse five, one of these guys who are there, or right, the Bible says this man was also found to be there. Uh, the Bible says he was invalid. It means that he was sick. Amen. He, this man." All right, he's not he's not well, he's not whole. It, there's something about his life, all right, that 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 will not allow him to move into God's counsel, God's plan for his life. Now, now you, you may argue, well, this is not a church, but well, the Bible says it's a ship gate, and I know that ship ship gate in this in the scripture basically amen, speaks of the entry point of God's will and God's counsel into our life. That is the place where you're supposed to be fed, you're supposed to be built up, you're supposed to be encouraged. So this is to me something we need to look into. As we deal deal with the kind of church, the kind of community, the kind of uh, ecclesia that we we should be seeing in this in this season and time, we don't want an ecclesia, all right? That people come there and lie there, paralyzed, blind, and you know, and and, and, and unable to move, or not able to step into, all right, God's purpose and plan for their life. So this is something here that, that we really need to pray about. We need to, if you if you are there listening to me, you're believing God, all right, to you know to lead you into a place where you can be developed, empowered, amen spiritually such that you can step into your prophetic destiny or whatever God will have you do. You don't want to be in this kind of a community. You don't want to be in a place amen, where the, you know, the congregants amen, are paralyzed. They're blind. They're lame. Amen. That they can't come into. They can't, they can't advance into the next reality of God. It's a place where everybody amen, seek to take advantage. Because if you look at what the, this guy said in verse, in verse, in, in verse 1 uh, uh, excuse me is that verse one? No, no. Uh, uh, verse um, verse six. The Bible says, "When Jesus saw him." Now, I think I'm missing it up now. Let me take it from verse one. The Bible says, "Sometimes later, Jesus went to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festival. Now, there in in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool." which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, which is surrounded by five covered colony, five covered colony. Let's not even begin to go into all this. I'm going to talk about, this is kind of a church that's supposed to be apostolic. It's apostolic looking, all right? It's got that five colony. It's got, amen, uh, uh, the, the gifting, supposed to have the giftings of God in the house, but something is still wrong with its functionality because the structure, the, the design of this house, amen, is not Christocentric. And that's something that we've got to, maybe sometime we'll do a teaching on this but the emphasis today the emphasis that we've been looking at amen for 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 the past one two weeks now all right is the issue of mental shift okay the bible says here a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind the lame the paralyzed verse five one who was there has been an invalid for 
38 years and I remember yesterday saying this guy is a type of a church in the wilderness. Amen. The Bible says that, you know, uh, uh, the children of Israel in the wilderness, they wandered in the wilderness for, for 38 years. That you find, I think, in the, in the book of Deuteronomy. They wander in the wilderness. So they've been roaming the same spot, going round and round and round and round. But there was no advancement. And this is the state of this man. All right? He's been there on the same spot. All right? uh, uh, you, you know, exerting so much energy just to get something happen. Depending on people, looking onto people. All right? But nothing happened. And that was the issue with the children of Israel. All right? They were actually looking at their own ability, looking at the ability of other people, looking at what you know other people can do for them or what other people or they can get from other people, but really not focusing on Christ, not follow, focusing on God, not focusing on what God wants to do for their life. And therefore the Bible says, Amen. God brought the fighting men to the to you know to their aim for 38 years while they were roaming, God was killing all the so-called fighting men, all the people they were depending on to, you know, that will, uh, uh, you know, give them a power or ability or a fight for them. The Bible says all the fighting men died in the wilderness. And until all the fighting men died in the wilderness, they could not enter into the borderline of God's counsel and purpose and, and destiny for their life. To me, this is wow. This is just so accurate. So the Bible says, this guy's been there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been there, in that condition for a long time he asked him a question and remember i've been dealing with the concept of questions the kind of question you ask what kind of question are you asking all right because you see when question are, when you're asked question or you ask question two things happen is either or right, it, it reveals your full your, your 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 foolishness your inability to think and process you know uh, uh, things or all right it, it, it manifests it reveals a your 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 intelligence so the bible says jesus asked this man a question question do you want to get well and like i was saying yesterday you how would you want to ask somebody who you know is desperate in need of help in need amen of solution and you're asking the person would you want help i will i will assume that that is not the question to be asking at that time just go ahead and do what you need to do but no jesus wasn't just looking at the physicality of this man he wasn't just looking at his you know at his paralysis as you know at his at, at his lameness he was actually looking at amen the mental paralysis all right the, the state of his mind that has been that has been crippled all right he was looking at the state of his spiritual eyes that has that has grown blind he was addressing that issue so he says do you want to get well it was a question. Then this man answered. He says, sir. The invalid answer, sir. He replied, I have no one. That's the point here. He said, I have no one to help me. So the concept that I was sharing yesterday that I also want to emphasize this morning is that this guy, or all his while he's been, you know, all the while he's been emphasizing, he's been depending, he's been looking. And that's basically, if you're in this kind of a house, if you're in this kind of a system, is, is you know, is, 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 is an issue that you have to basically depend on people. Remember that God, place people around our life to enhance our life to empower us to build us up but when it becomes uh, something that you do without really depending on god that you look up to man then then basically the whole essence of your spirituality is being jeopardized because indeed we we we, we pray to god we communicate to god and god amen will speak to the hearts of men to assist us to help us but if if you are bypassing god to you know nobody forgets the, 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 the thing is, who, who gets into the pool first, amen, gets healed, gets delivered. This is a torture house. And I tell you something, this cannot be, a, a, you know, a New Testament concept, amen, of healing. Because God doesn't put us in this kind of a situation just to give us, you know, miracle or blessing. The Bible says, you know, miracle are the children's bread. We just need to follow, amen, the right pattern, the right, you know, uh, uh, principle that has been set in the word of god and we will walk in our blessing but in a position where you will have to depend on people const con continually constantly i tell you it's going to be difficult it's going to be hard pressed for you to come into any form of you know substantial uh, uh, breakthrough and miracle and this is something I, I sense that you know god really wants to deal with as he engages with our thought pattern all right that we need to we need to divorce our mind amen from depending yeah here was the answer this guy gave to jesus do you want to get healed that is the uh, that is the question asked their friends their you know their neighbor and everybody jumps there 
because doing all right to deal because you know all your life you said i trusted in them i depend some of us are ever trusting in 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 the government like in in you know in a society like south africa where every you know most people depend on the government all right for assistance all right for social assistance and 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 when the government are not forthcoming that affects every aspect of of your livelihood your entire you know structure you know becomes you know uh, 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 disrupted and this is the plan of the enemy we we've got to break away from depending on people either financially spiritually materially financially listen to me god will use people but it is not for you to depend on people this is the point I'm making here because there are things God wants to do with, you know, with your life. There are things that God wants to carry out through your life, but you cannot afford to put your hope and your trust amen, in man because the Bible says the arm of flesh will fail. Even God himself will make sure that men fail you. This is the point I'm making here. So we've got to undress our mind. We've got to pull off amen, every high thing. The Bible says we need to cast off every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. This, these are the things we need to look into we need to look into how to cast down amen arguments uh, you know uh, 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 strong goals you know all kinds of things that we have allowed amen to be built into our mind uh, that have created all kinds of you know false false expectation why do we get disappointed because we built our life on false expectation let me read that scripture as i go into some other things that we're going to be looking into this morning let me go to second uh, corinthians chapter Chapter 10, chapter 10, verse uh, uh, 4 and 5. You know that scripture, right? Every time we want to deal with the issue of warfare, we always go to this scripture. But this scripture basically is deal with, dealing with something about the construct of how we think, our imagination, our thought pattern. All right? We're going to look at Second Corinthians chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 says, The weapons, the weapons of our warfare, all right, definitely we're fighting, all right. And this fight, we've got to understand the nature of the battle. We've got to understand the context of the battle, all right. This battle is more of a mental state. This battle is more of how we think, how we view. Because whatever is being you know, are carried out or whatever you're manifesting on the, on the outside, you know, outside the parameters of your life. Amen. It's first a condition of your thought pattern. It's first a condition of your imagination. It's first a position of how you think. All right. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare. All right. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not of this world or they are not carnal. They are not human. Instead, they have divine power to demolish, to demolish strong goals. Strong goal, amen, is a place where you, you, you hide. You hide things there, all right? It's a strong goal. Basically, a strong goal is a place where you hide, where it's a, it's a defense uh, position. It's a place, it's, it's, it's like a garrison. It's a place where you build up uh, uh, your weaponry, all right? It's a place of strategy. It's a place where you prepare yourself to... To attack if you if you want to attack is a strong goal you a strong goal is a is a fortify you know a, a, a environment is a strong environment so so at, at this point when paul was using this concept of a strong goal all right he's talking about certain things that have been built all right within our life remember strong goal must be built and what built a strong goal <coughs> depends on the kind of uh, 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 narrative, on the kind of perceptions, belief system that you have allowed into your life, into your belief system, into how you view life. Like I was sharing yesterday, some people say, well, this is me. This is who I am. But you've built a stronghold of doubt and fear and unbelief and, 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 and pride and anger and, you know, all this negative thing. But we've built a stronghold around those things to the point that when anything comes to try to attack or you know a challenge amen our our belief our concept of you know our philosophy or culture all right we rise up and we fight against those things because we don't want amen anything that would challenge our state of thought our state of mind is a stronghold so the bible says amen the weapons of our warfare they are not of this world they are not carnal they are not human so we're dealing with a warfare in a in a in a realm of 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 imagination, warfare in a realm, amen, of thought pattern, warfare, amen, in a, in in a realm of the spirit. We're dealing with demonic arguments. We're dealing with forces of darkness. We're dealing with principality. We're dealing with amen, uh, 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 perceptions, beliefs. We're dealing with culture. We're dealing with tradition. We're dealing with religious spirit. We're dealing with all kinds of demonic attack. These are all things that we're dealing with. And for you to be able to deal with those things, first 
first of all, you've got to pull down, amen, the wrong negative stronghold that you have built around your life. This is the crux of the matter. When we deal with the issues of undressing, we want to undress our life, amen, from the false identity, from, from the false belief, amen, from the false thought pattern. We want to deal with, amen, those areas that we have come to accept, amen, that have paralyzed us, amen, that have crippled us to some degree that have even blind us, that we no longer see what God, amen, is showing us, that we no longer hear what God, amen, is saying to us, that we no longer believe what God, amen, will have us believe. Because if you have a stronghold of unbelief, guess what? It will be very difficult. You'll be hard-pressed to believe anything God has said, amen. So even when God says, if you have faith like a monster seed, you can say to this mountain, you won't see the monster seed and you will not see the authority behind what God has said. What you'll be seeing is the mountain. So a stronghold of unbelief hinders you, hinders your faith, amen, from, from charging to us, amen, that point where you deal with the mountain before you. A stronghold will, will, will stop you, amen, from accepting what God has said about your life. A stronghold, amen, will keep you limited, will keep you blind, will keep you, amen, frustrated. Will, in fact, the essence of a stronghold, amen, is to cri- cripple you, is to lame you, is to maim you, maybe to destroy you. Because the Bible says, for the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is the mission of the enemy. And the enemy will use, Satan will use every form of you know, demonic influence and system, okay, to to make sure he kills you, he steals from you, and he obviously terminates you. So you've got to understand the nature of the kind of warfare that God has called you into. That warfare is not just until you start to pray and bind and lose. No. Warfare starts with the state of your mind. Come on. Warfare starts first with the state of your mind. If your mind is not in alignment to God's word, if you are not in agreement to God's counsel, to God's principle, to God's standard, amen, to God's desire and design for you, you've lost the battle. No matter how you pray, your prayer will be out of order. No matter how you fast, amen, your fasting will not accelerate your spirituality to the place where you can take delivery of what God has said. Because first of all, you've got, amen, a state of mind that is designed by unbelief. You, you, are, you, are, you are doubting what God has said, amen. You don't trust what God, amen. A lot of people, when they read the Bible, they don't really see themselves in the light of what God said. Well, they see the, the word of God as a thought party thing. Well, yes, this is what happened to Paul. It happened to Peter. All right, I'm just reading it because the Bible says I must read it. So they read the, the scripture religiously, but they never find themselves. They never actually put their, you know, footprint, foot, put their heart, amen, in the place where, all right, this, this, this experience took place, amen. When you read Paul, when you read the scripture and you read about Paul, you should find yourself there so that that which, amen, Paul was talking about becomes, amen, the very value system that drives your existence. That is how the word of God works in our life. If the word of God is not becoming flesh to you, you cannot use it as a principle against the powers of darkness against the works of the enemy because you'll be living in a state of unbelief so the bible says amen that that you know that you know god has given us these weapons that are not weapons of the world and you understand that all, the world has all kinds of weapons. You know, today we've got what they call uh, weapons of mass destruction. All kinds of weapons out there. But the Bible says instead, this, this, this weapon that has been given to us, amen, they are there as authority, as power to demolish, to demolish strongholds. My good God, to demolish strongholds, to demolish them. To When you demolish, you pull it down, you bring it down. I tell you, there are towers that need to be coming down. I, as I'm speaking today, I, I declare in the name of Jesus, let every high tower, every tower of Babel that is designed and ordained to be a stronghold in your life, begin to collapse. The strongholds of doubt and fear and insecurity and dysfunctionality the strongholds that you have you have inherited based on the environment you were born based on your nationality based on your 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 your, your challenge based on your you know your upbringing strongholds you inherited from your parents strongholds that came in through your bloodline I raise a standard against them in the name of Jesus Christ I declare right now that the word of the Lord like an armor begin to shatter those strongholds fear come down in Jesus name insecurity come down I declare in the name of Jesus on un- unworthiness that thing that says you're unworthy that, that that spirit that says you're an orphan I, I shatter them in the name of Jesus I declare that 
that you have Christ in you. And if the Holy Spirit in, is in you, you are no longer an orphan. You have been redeemed from the spirit of the world. You've been redeemed from the spirit of darkness. Come on. You've been redeemed from the powers of hell. This day I declare, let the stronghold of fear and doubt uh, and, uh, and insecurity and lack and poverty begin to come down in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, this is how we do it. It says that we demolish, we demolish strongholds. Remember, they are not one, strongholds, plural. He said, we tear down arguments and every presum- presumption that sets, that sets against the knowledge of God. We tear down, we tear down, we tear down. We don't just demolish, but we tear them down. We tear down arguments and every presumption set up against, set up against the knowledge of God. My good God, there are all kinds of presumptive ideas, all kinds of false belief, all kinds of false identity, all kinds of ungodliness today that have been that have been set up against the knowledge of God, against the counsel of God for our life, for our children, for community, for society today. You look at all that is happening in the world. You talk about transgender, you talk about you know uh, uh, homosexual, you talk about you know lesbians. These are all ideas that men have set up satanic powers and forces of darkness have set up to destroy the destiny of people. You talk about poverty. You talk about lack of education, disempowerment uh, in communities, in homes. Uh, you talk about rebellion. You know, all kinds of agenda that is being pushed out there all right, by, by the New Age movement, by, by, by the globalist movement, uh, by, you know, by, 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 by all this false, false spirit out there in the name of Jesus. We, we rise up against them and we begin to tear them down. Father, I thank you right now. Lord, every word that has been set up, every argument that has that has that has been set up every presumptive word that has been set up against your knowledge in the life oh god of your people in the life of cities nations community i break them down i begin to bind the heart of men to your will again i begin to lord align the thoughts of men to your counsel their mind their imagination father i pull down every falsehood every false identity fear insecurity doubt disbelief marco shayande i declare this day you are shattered in Jesus name I raise a standard I declare right now that the word of the Lord begin to pass. I take authority over suicidal spirit I take authority over the spirit of destruction the Bible says for affliction will not strike on time I raise a standard against the works of darkness against every satanic imposition I decree right now let God arise and let his enemies be shattered over nations in the name of Jesus we push back the works of the enemy I declare the kingdom of God has come near you. The, the sec- this is how we do You're listening to me this morning. This is your day of deliverance. It's your day of miracle. It's your day of healing. It's your day of stepping out of the old man. You're stepping into the new man. You're stepping into the new life. You're with brethren. Re- re- replaying the old that keeps replaying your old life your old your past your your your, your disappointments your fear your, your 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 abuse and misuse i decree right now we take thoughts we take charge over those thoughts and we pull them down in the name of jesus christ of nazareth the name that is above every other name i declare i take captive over every thought of fear and doubt and lack and poverty and sickness and disease and infirmity began in jesus name in the name of Jesus, I speak peace to your mind. I speak peace to your mind. I speak peace to your home. I speak peace. I speak joy. I speak hope. I speak faith. I speak restoration. I say right now, you are aligned to God's eternal prophetic purpose for your life, for your home, for your marriage, for your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. What are we doing? We're taking delivery. We are taking delivery. We are no longer giving in to the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for that great release. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. And so, this, this, the, the, we'll go back to John ch- chapter 5. The Bible says this guy began to, you know, uh, uh, say to Jesus, Lord, I have no one. I have no one. These are, these are days where we shift from having no one to begin to look up. In the days of the nearness of the kingdom, we look up for that is where our redemption comes from. 
Your redemption does not come from man. Your redemption, your salvation, your healing, your prosperity, your deliverance is not in the hand of any prophet. It's not in the hand of any apostle. It's not in the hand of any magician. It's not in the hand of any uh, 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 God knows who. Your your life, your destiny is in the hand of God. Is the one calling you right now. Is the one asking you, do you want to get well? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be free? Do you want to be delivered? Stop looking for answer around you. Look into your heart and speak. The invalid man said, he replied, I have no one to help me into the pool. When the water is dead, while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. They go down ahead of me. That is no longer your portion. But what did Jesus say to this man? The Bible says Jesus said to him, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. I like that. I like that. I like that. Jesus knew that he could no longer relate to the state of this guy's mind. He spoke the word. The word of authority. Governmental word. Get up. Take your mat and walk. And at once the man was cured. Picked up his mat and walked. This is going to be a portion in 2019. I prophesied into your life. That you're no longer going to be crippled because the word of the Lord is coming to you. The word of the Lord is coming to your home. It's coming to your life. It's coming to your marriage. It's coming to your home. It's coming to your, your domain. It's coming to your environment. It's coming to your community. The word of the Lord is coming to your community. It's coming to your city. Get up. Get up. Get up. Pick your mat and walk. Mobility was given to this guy. No longer paralyzed, no longer limited. Mobility was given to him. A true miracle will give you mobility and sight. Capacity to live where you are to the next place that God has ordained for your life. Mobility is the ability to step into the reality of God's intention for your life. That is mobility. And that to me, that is miracle. And that's that with the state of your mind. So having said this, having laid this powerful foundation, we go back to one of the scriptures that we, you know, we, we, we began to look at initially when we began this uh, teaching and that you find in, uh, um, in 1 Samuel chapter 7, you know, chapter 17. The scripture said again, all right, that, let me, let me, let me, let me read that scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 17, remember the story again, David and Goliath and all that and Saul, all right? Let me let me let me take it from verse uh, thirty four. But David said to Saul, "Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it when it turned to me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant." has killed both the lion and the bear. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the army of the living God. The Lord was the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul so said to David, Go! The Lord be with you. I wish Saul had stopped here. Go, the Lord be with you. After, after, after David had given Saul this powerful testimony of what the Lord has used him to do in the wilderness where no one was there, my good God, and some of the greatest training you will ever you will ever get in your life is in the wilderness where no one sees, no where no one knows what is going on. And I tell you, that is how God trains his own, particularly if God is calling you into the prophetic, if God is calling you into something very unique, God will hide you behind, amen, the cleft of the rock somewhere, training and preparing preparing you as you as, as he allows the lions and the bears of the wall system to come forth fight you and as you overcome the as you overcome all that is to prepare you prepare your mind for the day where you're going to face the ultimate the goliaths you see if you have never fight bears and and lie and lions you don't ever expect that you're going to face goliath david was so sure because he had a reference of what god had done in the past you see, the concept of the mind of david in, in, in using the past was positive 
not negative. David never referred to anything about ne- in, uh, anything negative about, about his past. No, when when he when he referred to his past, he looked at the trophies. Kalabayada. He looked at his victories. And he could relate that because he knew those victories were not given by men. He knew those victories were not given by circumstances, but they, but they came from the Lord. He said, uh, the Lord would deliver me from the paw of the lion, amen, and the paw amen, of the bear would deliver me from the, from the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. I wish Saul would have said, and stop there, go, the Lord be with you. Saul said, go, the Lord is with you. <laughs> Go, the Lord is with you. Stop there, Saul. No, he didn't stop there. Look at verse 38. 38. Then Saul dressed David in his own tonic. You see, that is where we need to be very careful and be cautious. When we have given a testimony and declare what God has done for us. And we have been given, amen, the go ahead, go. We should just go. And this is where we need boldness. We need courage. Because this is very, very vital. Now, remember who, remember who is chatting with David here. Is the king. Is the king. Is the president. Is powerful. The Bible says, Then Saul dressed David in his own tonic. I'm sure taught, po, po, uh, excuse me, Saul, Saul must have taught, you know, he's doing something, you know, great, something grand, something powerful, something very influential. He thought he's doing something very wonderful by dressing David. Saul dressed David in his own tonic. There's something I wrote down here on my note. I would like to read it quickly. David refused to accept that which may may seem good, trendy, influential, honorable, and even respectful in the sight of men, but not effective in carrying out is assignment to destroy Goliath. Learning to break the hold of man's influence in the fulfillment of divine initiative is critical in the days of high level social cultural insecurity. Learning to address, excuse me, learning to undress ourselves from the popular opinions, beliefs, and culture is critical to stepping into the arena of divine representation and to me this just this this just makes my day when i read the scripture when i read the statement because this is what david is saying here all right because if you read on let's let's see the bible says david uh, Saul dressed david in his own tonic he put a coat of armor on him and bronze helmet on his head david fasting on his sword over the tonic and tried walk walking around because he was not used to them. So he tried walking around. He tried walking around. Okay, you're giving me your gear. You're giving me all right, your ailment. You're giving me your sword. You're giving me all these things. So the Bible says, David did not just straight, you know, went out to go to fight. No, no. He tried walking around. He tried out this thing. This, 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 this obsolete, uh, 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 you know, weaponry. All right. That, that, you know, that is coming from the most powerful man, the king. He tried walking around. Let's feel this thing. Ah, David discerned, he realized, sorry, this is not, you know, I really, you know, take my, you know, my heart, you know, hope for David. Because you see, for a lot of us, for a lot of us, we will allow the insecurity, we will allow the fear of man, all right, to, you know, to carry us with that gear, with that weaponry, with that, you know, armory of Saul. We will go, we will, that, we will go out to want to face Goliath. Meanwhile, you know in your heart of heart that, hey, no, 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 this is not made for me. This is not tailor-made for me. I cannot go with this. But because we are afraid of men, we are afraid. The Bible says we must be very careful of how we fear men. The fear of men will lead to destruction. David, amen, will not, will not allow, amen, the state and the condition, the influence, the, the power, all right, the authority of the king to stop him from stepping into that which God has ordained for him. The Bible said, he undressed himself. Let me read on. Let me read on. Let me read on. The Bible says, so put a cord of armory on him and a bronze element on his head. David fasting on his sword over the tonic and try to walk around because he had not he had not he's not been used to it the bible says bible says he said i cannot go in this i cannot go in this hey when are you gonna learn to say no to what you know is not gonna be effective 
When are you going to learn to say no? When you know that thing is not going to work. Do not allow the fear of men. Do not allow what seem popular, what seem wonderful, what seem trendy, what seem, you know, beautiful, what people may hail and appreciate and, you know, and really, you know, begin to, you know how people do it out there. Yes, yes, that's the man. He's putting on the tonic of, of saw. He's going to finish not knowing that you have just sold your authority. You've just, you, you have just given up your power and position. David undressed himself. Sir, don't be angry. I cannot go with this. He undressed the tonic of David, of, of Saul. He removed the armory. Now, in the natural, you would think David is foolish. Because all this thing, in, if, I mean, if you're looking at things from the natural perspective, you say, wow, this guy is actually protected. Protected from what? <laughs> Protected from what? The wisdom of Saul is obsolete. The wisdom of Saul has no ability or power to even kill a fly. If his wisdom was that powerful enough, if his armory and sword was that you know sharp enough, amen. Why can't he go face Goliath? After all, it was his battle. David undressed himself. I cannot go with this. I can't go in this. He said to Saul. Because I am not used to them. So he took them off. So he took them off. So he took them off. So David took them off. This is a prophetic word for somebody out there. This is a prophetic word for some ministry. You want to do ministry. You've been doing ministry. But you've been doing ministry from the perspective of. Of that which is obsolete from the saw, from the concept of saw, from the mindset of saw. It looks beautiful, it looks wonderful on the outside, everything looks shiny. Amen. It, it looks as if you are actually protected, but guess what? That thing cannot stand, cannot withstand. Amen. The force, the power of Goliath waiting for you out there. You will be a mincemeat if you try to go. This is a day where we need to undress our mind. We need to remove, amen. We need to have amen, a concept of a new day, a new way, a new mentality, new wine in a new wine skin. You try to do ministry from the way it was done in the day of Saul. You are going to die in this new day. This is the day of David. This is the day God is restoring the tabernacle of David. And we need, amen, the right kind of heavenly gear to be able. Because in the day of the restoration of, 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 of the tabernacle of David, which is, a, which is a dimension of a people in the earth, that is a time and day where we were able to destroy, where we were able to finish, amen, the son, the Goliath of our time, of our day. Oh, hallelujah. None of us will be able to face and fight and overcome the Goliath, the giants of our day. Dressing like Saul. Looking like Saul. Having Saul's armory. Having Saul's weapon. Having Saul's sword. You will not be able. Your, 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 your best of the best of the best prepared army will fail. Saul said, give me a man. A boy faced him. Saul said, excuse me, Goliath said, give me a man. God sent him a boy. <laughs> That's a word. Goliath said, give me a man to fight me. God sent him a boy, a teenager. Prepared at the backside of the wilderness. In the entire land of Israel, there was no man that could face, that could stand. The power and the force of Goliath. But God sent Goliath. A boy. What a day. What, what a release of the spirit. What a prophetic release of God. Into the atmosphere this morning. What am I saying? There has to be a point in your life where you know how to reject that which is of soul, that which is obsolete, that which you have clothed your mind with that is of this world. The Bible says you need to cast off the old self, the old mindset, 
the old position of thinking, the worldly kind of concept of thinking. You need to cast it off because it's not going to help you. Because if you do, you will continue to look up to man. Like we read about this guy in, in John chapter 5. He kept saying there was no man. Because his eyes, amen, his thought is fixative on a man's deliverance. You got to break away from that. You got to come into a new day of seeing that which God wants to do in your life. I'll go back to Ephesians chapter 4, 20, you know, 21 and 22 again. We read it uh, two days ago. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, 20, you know, 20, 21 and 22. The Bible says, Surely you heard of him and were thought in him, talking about Jesus now, in keeping with the truth that is in Jesus, to put off your old former life, to put off your old former way of life, your old self, which is being corrupt. Which has been corrupted, amen, by its deceitful desire. One of the one of the one of the nature, amen, of the old self, amen, is that is deceitful, and the desire is deceitful because all he wants, amen, is the idea of what he can get for himself, for you know, for for his own pleasure. But if you're going to fight, if you're going to step into the reality of the of, of that which is before you, amen, you have to learn to cast off your old self and begin to, amen, enter into the scope of the new man, of the new reality, amen, that is in Christ. According to Colossians chapter, chapter 3, in fact, I'm going to read that Colossians chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read Colossians chapter 3. Or rather, is it Colossians chapter 2? Yes, Colossians chapter 3, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 1 says, If then you, if, 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 is that, that's a big clause. If then you were raised with Christ, it says, seek things which are above. If you've been raised with Christ, seek the things which are above. This is how you, un- you reclothe yourself. You want to get you, you want to come to that place where you are redressed. You want to come to that place, amen, where that which is taken from you is restored. You want to come into that place where you step into your destiny, where you step into the scope of fulfilling purpose. He said, amen, you've got to seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2 say, set your mind on things above your mind. That's talking about, amen, on clothing and reclothing. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. In other words, don't wear earthly clothes. Don't wear earthly apparel. Don't wear earthly mindset. He said, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your life is hidden. Listen to this. Your life is hidden. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. When, when Christ, who is your life, appear, you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, off put to death excuse me therefore put to death your members which are on the earth you see the two nature he's talking about the two kinds of life one of these days we're going to be doing a teaching called the heavenly man the heavenly man (laughs) we've got to break away from the earthly man's nature he says therefore put to death your members which are on the earth fornications uncleanness passions evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry then verse 6 says because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. Verse 8 says, But now, but now, but now, you yourself are to put off these things anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off. Can you see? Put off. Put off. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Cynthia, slaves, nor free, but Christ in all and in all. I love this. Karaba. This is the confluence of what I call the man of the spirit, the heavenly man. That when we come to this point in our life, our thought pattern, you see, we're struggling. We're struggling to walk in unity with people. We're strugg- struggling to, you know, to walk in agreement. Is because we do not understand what the word of God has said. Here is what God has told us. When we put off the old man with his deeds and come into that confluence where we're wearing the nature of the new man, 
We cannot both to speak the same language. We will not have the issues that we're having today in the church where people cannot walk together, where people cannot agree, where people cannot see things to, you know, in the same light. Because we're not living in the life of truth. When we put off and we put on the new man, guess what? We will step into a day of complete victory. Another scripture before I go that I would like to share with you. In fact, this I guess this should be the last scripture that I'm going to share. Now, begin to round up this morning. It's uh, still talking about you know resisting, putting off. You know, sometimes we need to come to a point where we where we where we where we cast off. And sometimes when we cast off, it may be painful. Remember, God said to uh, to to Abraham. Let go of, of, of Ishmael. <laughs> let go of him. Let, let him go. Let, there are things I want to do in your life. You've got to let Ishmael go. If, if, if you don't let him go, the things I want to do in your life will not come into fruition. So learning to put something off, you know, casting, you know, casting away certain things, breaking yourself amen, from certain things are crucial to be able to advance. They may be painful, but they are crucial amen, to be able to step into the reality of God's counsel for your life. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter chapter 11. The Bible says that verse 24. Bible, Bible says by faith Moses. 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 Remember Moses. By faith Moses. When he had grown up. When he had matured. He refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated. Along with the people of God. Rather to enjoy the pleasure of sin. For a short period. Ah, the power of restraint will give you the ability to make accurate decisions that will change and transform destiny. The power of restraint. When you come to a point in your walk with God, you begin to you begin to step into maturity. That maturity begins to highlight within your heart, within your life, things that are not supposed to be there. And then you begin to say no to them. <laughs> I mean, and me imagine you coming to a point where all your life you you you've le- you've lived in affluence and influence and power and authority and you you know you you went where you want to go, you eat what you want to eat. I mean, you you were the guy you were supposed to be next in king. And the Bible says, Moses, as he grew and mature, the vision, the purpose of God, the counsel of God for his life brought him to a point where he said, no, I can no longer bear this false image, this false identity. I need to cast off this, this garment. It's not mine. I am not an Egyptian. <laughs> uh, you may be hiding in Egypt. But a day must come that you must leave Egypt, amen, where you must hear the voice of God, hallelujah, and step out of Egypt into destiny. The Bible says Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. What a, what a man, what a value, what a position to be, what a, what a dimension of discipline, what a concept of value system that we need to have in our day. In a day where people are selling their birthright for a pot of pottage, Oh, where people are selling their birthright for all kinds of ungodly, ungodly, ungodly things. Selling their, their birthright, their spiritual identity for, for a jet plane or right, for some big auditorium. Selling their birthright for some big congregation. Selling their calling all right, for, you know, for money. Come on, we need to rise up and believe God for a new position of authority and say, I am not the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I'm taking my place this day. I rather choose to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the pleasure of Egypt that is for a season. I'm taking my place. These are the kind of people God is looking for in this day. Because those are the ones that will truly represent the demand of God. The power and the authority. They will carry the government of God upon their shoulder. And reveal it to the nations of the world. Come on. This day I want to prophesy into your life. As you hear this word. Let this word begin to steer your heart to a new position. To a new mentality. To a new reality in Christ Jesus. May you not give up. May you not give up. May you not give up. May you not die before your time what you need to do right now is to cast down put down hallelujah un- unclothe yourself from every false garment from every false image from every false value system i want you to begin to cast them down right now the bible says, casting down every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of god every argument bring them down take captive every thought in the name of jesus and begin to wear the lord jesus christ begin to put on the lord jesus christ christ is your lord christ is your shield christ is your banner christ 
peace is your hope, is your peace, is your joy, is all you need. And when you have Christ, you have creativity, you have the ability to go further and make it come on. God has prospered you. Step into the arena of a new day, begin to walk in the new light of that which God has ordained for you. I speak peace to your mind right now. Thank you, Father. It's a brand new day. Oh, a new order of men are emerging. A Zion tribe. A Zion tribe are emerging. A remnant are breaking out. Coming out to meet you, Father God. Thank you, Father, for the identity of your name upon our forehead. Thank you for your spirit right now that is awakening every aspect of our being we align to your will your kingdom come your kingdom come your will be done as it is established in heaven let it be done in and through our life may our life be poured out May the river of our spirit flow out for the healing of the nation. Jesus, you are the hope of the world. We pray this day, may hope flow into every household, family, churches. May there be a regrouping of the heavenly man. Thank you, Lord, that you've delivered us from blindness, from lameness, and from paralysis. We rejoice in the light of truth. Darkness is becoming a thing of the past. We honor your name. We honor your name. Oh, Jehovah God. Elian. Elian. We celebrate you, Ebenezer. Thus, you have helped us. We thank you. May this word, O God, go forth to the ends of the earth. May every heart hungry, searching for truth, come across this river, that they may drink and be alive again in you. I thank you, my Father. Thank you, O God, for homes that have been healed in this community of Franjuk. This is the base where we speak into nations. We decree and declare the religious spirit that want to keep the people blind, paralyzed, and crippled. In the name of Jesus, the one who called me, who sent me, this day you arise upon this community and free the people, my Lord. Awaken the people. From drunkenness, from blindness, from lameness. Open the eyes of the people that they may see. Let the wind of your spirit sweep through the land. Let there be a rumbling. Let there be a sounding of the trumpet of your spirit. Let it be loud and clear that no one will claim that they've not heard. I thank you. We take the land back for you. We proclaim your righteousness, kingdom, and dominion over this community. We pull down the Dagons and the Ashtra poles. We pull down the strongholds of idolatry, the worship of self and man and money and mammal. We bind that spirit. We cast it out. Yeah, we bind the soul of the people to your will. We decree and declare that your kingdom reigns in Franjuk. 
We thank you, Father, for what your Spirit is doing all over South Africa this day. Thank you. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Thank you for the manifestation of your power for this land, your prophetic ordained counsel is coming to pass. Nothing will stop it. Nothing will hinder it. You will be glorified upon this mountain. Yes, there shall be an offering of fat lambs to your name, O God. On this mountain, we will offer to you an offering, O God, of fattenings, O God. You will be glorified. Your name will be hallowed across this nation. Your church, your advanced, renewed, prophetic church will emerge. A church dead to the flesh, dead to self will emerge. You alone will be glorified. Thank you for what you're doing all across the nation, all across Africa. Your kingdom come. We renew our covenant with you. We thank you this day for this spirit, for this word that has gone forth. Undress to be redressed. Thank you. We will go forth with your word. Not with the garments of Saul. Not with the mentality of the past. He says, see, I do a new thing. It's springing forth this day. We go forth with your new word, with your fresh word. With the current word. With your proceeding word. We declare in the name of Jesus, our Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. I want to thank you this morning for tuning in, for being part of this broadcast, live broadcast. We believe in God that one of these days, God will help us again to start broadcasting through the video. But for now, we can only do audio and we'll continue to do that until we have a better facility to do that so that we can really broadcast in a way where everything will run smooth. But for now, please continue to join, you know, this force, this walk, this advancement online through the radio. Pray, ask the Lord in whatever way he will ask you, you know, to or want you to support what we're doing. We'll really appreciate it. It's between you and God. Speak to God and let him speak to your heart. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. This is just the beginning. We just start in the year and we lay a very powerful, solid foundation as we begin this new year and we see what God wants to do. There's so much that we believe in God for this year. Uh, uh, hopefully very soon, we're going to start Zadok Leadership Prophetic School again. All right. Last year, we laid some beautiful, strong prophetic foundation in terms of understanding what the prophetic nature and uh, the prophetic framework is. Uh, this this year, uh, this month, we're going to be looking into some very concept about, you know, uh, operating in the prophetic and some other things. And then we're going to be dealing with uh, uh, the nature of the heavenly man, which is a concept of uh, uh, a discipleship training that we need to have. Because there's so much that I see that, uh, that, that is missing within the church today. There's so much disconnection. So we want to put in all the pieces, all right, that are not in alignment. We want to put them back so that what God is doing in our day, amen, can be clearly understood and we can walk with them, amen, seamlessly without any form of uh, disconnection or hindrance. So this is the purpose, this is the plan, amen, of Zadok Leadership uh, uh, Prophetic School. So continue to pray along with us. We believe in God for great things. I'm really believing God for great things. We want to serve God. Bible says, serve the Lord while amen, you have the strength. I really want to dedicate my, my time, my life, all right, to serving the Lord, to continue to do the bidding of the Lord. And then this year, I'm going to be 50. So I'm, there's so many things I'm believing God to really uh, uh, do in terms of, you know, celebrating this milestone. I, I know God has been so, so great and so good to me. Uh, and I really want to do more for God. Uh, and I'm believing leaving the Lord that he will continue to grant me the grace and the strength and the mobility to do what needs to be done so that we can push the work of the kingdom to the next frontier. And if Jesus tarry, will continue to do that. Amen. Our desire is to prepare him amen, a church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. We want to be able to say when he knocks on that door that we are ready to open for him to come in. Thank you so very much for being part of this broadcast today. God bless you. Continue to journey with us. Have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye.